Uh, welcome to Choose Your Own Adventure. Oh, you know what? I forgot my clicker. I was so excited to get up here. I think it's in my bag. That's Same. the way to start, yeah. Usually Victor's the one that messes up the first time in this presentation. I won't disappoint this time. <laughs> oh, no. All right, here we go. Meet Hero. Hero is application source code on a developer's laptop. Hero longs to be a real application running in production, serving end users, and we're going to help Hero along the way. So our job is to help Hero navigate hundreds of CNCF projects, choose which ones to use, integrate them with one another can, with, so Hero can live their dream. My name is Whitney. This is Victor. Victor and I together host a show called You Choose on Victor's YouTube channel called DevOps Toolkit. So You Choose is a choose your own adventure style journey through the CNCF landscape, and each episode represents a different system design choice. So for that system design choice, we gather all the relevant CNCF tech that can do that thing. Then we invite a maintainer or super user on from each tech, and they each get only five minutes to present about their technology. So we put them head to head, then we have a nice discussion, then we put it to the vote. And whatever technology the community chooses is the technology that we build into our ongoing demo. So the current demo environment we have for this talk is based off of choices made in YouChoose. So we have an AWS EKS cluster running, it's been, and it's been defined with cross-plane resources. We are using GitOps, and specifically we're using Argo CD because that's what you, the community, chose. So our application already is deployed in our demo environments, and also our end users can access it because you chose Contour as the ingress solution. So wait, it sounds like Hero already is running in production and serving end users. So what are we doing here? Uh, Hero's already living their dream. Well, the problem is, Hero is not lit running in a secure production environment. Right now, Hero's in danger. The users are in danger. The system's in danger. Oh, no. We need your help. So please scan this QR code. During this presentation, we're going to have live voting. And so for you to be able to vote for which tech you want to see implemented in our ongoing demo by Victor, you need to scan this QR code. And we're going to go through three system design choices today. We're going to talk about... We're going to uh, admission controller policy. We're going to talk about and examine tools from runtime policy. And we're also going to examine tools that will uh, help us get Kubernetes, get secret information into our Kubernetes cluster. So if you didn't get that QR code now, it's, it'll come up again later when it's time to vote. I'll, I'll wait till some of the phones are down. OK, sounds good. So we're going to help Hero live their dream and run in a secure production environment. So first up, let's talk about admission controller policies. The tools we're going to talk about today are Kyverno, OPA Gatekeeper, and Cubewarden. So first, what is cluster level policy or admission controller policy? Well, as things stand, bad things can happen on our cluster, like our application can become bloated and use way too much uh, resources. Or it could be running outdated versions of things. Or it could be pulling images from untrusted container registries. So we need to create policy. And policy is an organization-specific rule about what, is, what actions are and are not allowed to happen in our cluster. So we can make rules to, say, uh, put limits on resource consumption. We can make rules to declaratively say what versions of something must be run. We can make rules that say images have to be pulled from a, a trusted registry, and like a bazillion other rules. So how does it work? How does actually implementing it work? So as a, 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 an author, you make a policy an organization-specific policy. And what that policy does is it adds configuration to the Cube API in the form of an admission controller webhook. So at this point, nothing's running. All you've done is taught Cube API. If a request comes in that falls under the jurisdiction of this rule, send that request to the admission controller. 
Now the admission controller is actually a piece of software that's running, and it is either a validating admission controller or a mutating mission, admission controller. So it's, if it's validating, it's gonna say, yes, this is, resource is allowed, no, it's not. It's a yes or no answer. If it's mutating, it might change something about the resource before it's allowed to be created in Kubernetes. So either way, the admission controller software is gonna return a response, and now the Cube API is going to behave in accordance to your organization's policy. So let's talk about the tools themselves. First up, Kyverno. Kyverno is a Kubernetes native admission controller. So it, that means um, with Kyverno, you author policy in YAML, kind of. What you're actually authoring policy is Kyverno JSON query language. And the idea is that it's meant to look and feel like YAML. So it's made to write policy for Kubernetes. And if you're, if you're a cluster administrator, if you're writing policy for a Kubernetes cluster, the idea is you're probably very familiar with YAML and that's the best way for you to write policy. Kyverno, it's a graduated project. It has a lot of other bells and whistles too, but those are not differentiating. So I'm gonna move on to the next one, with it, which is OPA Gatekeeper. OPA Gatekeeper, the OPA stands for Open Policy Agent. And it is um, Open Policy Agent without the Gatekeeper part is a platform agnostic uh, policy engine. So it can make policy with Gatekeeper for Kubernetes, but also you can write policy for anything in your entire system, not just Kubernetes. Um, OPA Gatekeeper, Gatekeeper is a wrapper that makes it so you can use open policy agents with Kubernetes resources specifically. Now with OPA Gatekeeper, you have to author your policy in Rego. Rego is a notoriously difficult language to learn and use. So that is the big drawback of OPA Gatekeeper, but then if you're already using Rego, then it makes a lot of sense to also use OPA in your system. OPA Gatekeeper is also a graduated project with lots of bells and whistles. And then finally, we have Cubewarden. The makers of Cubewarden, they were like, you know what? I don't want to write policy in YAML, and I don't want to write policy in Rego, so let's make a whole new thing. And so with OPA, with Cubewarden, Cubewarden's a new tool, a newer tool, it's a sandbox project. And with Cubewarden, you write policy in any language you want, really any language you want, even Rego, if you really don't like yourself. And, and you can wrap, you can compile that policy into a WASM module. And then the WASM module, it can be um, stored and distributed and saved as an OCI artifact, but it runs as part of the policy engine. And that's how you write policy with Cubewarden. And now it's time to vote. Which one would you like to see Victor do? Uh, implement in the demo today? Easy, none. Oh, it makes me nervous. Okay, good. Hugh Warden. So now the idea is not that one of these technologies is the winner, it's just what you're curious to learn more about. So if you're already using one, please don't choose that one. Choose one that you'll learn about. Okay. Let's do cube warden then. Looks like cube warden. Uh, no, this is the turn. Did you let me change the slide? Is the vote still live? I don't know. Nobody um, knows. There we go. I, everyone in this room knows except for us. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Okay. So, uh, first thing I'm going to do is copy the file from policies. Heck, I don't see anything. Okay, cool. Um, I'm going to copy this file, uh, cube warden YAML, to info directory. This YAML. Uh, I'll explain why I'm cop doing that instead of showing you what's going on in a second. And I'm going to uh, commit, add commit and push it to Git. The reason why I'm doing this is because it takes a few moments until Git, uh, Argo CD figures it out and synchronizes it into cluster, does the thing. And while that is happening, I can show you how it looks like. And uh, it looks like this, right? So uh, with Cube Warden, I created what, like three or four policies. Uh, basically, this one will be applied uh, to to applications, specifically to deployments, and if somebody tries to create or update a deployment, right? And then I'm passing the value, uh, the key replicas greater than two, right? Behind the scenes. Uh, I'm not sure that whether I will have time. You need to uh, know that there is a Go code that will 
uh, that is running in a cluster and it will be accepting that parameter, do, doing the calculation and saying yes or no, right? I used Go to write my cube warden policies and this is just how we create instances of those policies, right? So, in other words, hey, if uh, deployments needs to have two or more, uh, sorry, more than two replicas to pass the policies, right? And they have, uh, and then I have, this is admission policy, somebody should say, uh, doesn't matter. Uh, then we have another policy that says, hey, if you try to create something called SQL claims or SQLs, right? This is now custom resources. I'm using crossplane, but not important for this story. What does matter is that if somebody tries to create or update SQL claim, then uh, the size that is allowed is going to be small, medium, and large, right? Again, you cannot know 100% what's going on through only YAML because you would need to inspect the code behind Cube Warden, but that's, that's what it does uh, in general, right? And then another one that says, hey, uh, another one for uh, SQL claims, but this time if it's in production, right? Previous would have applied to any namespace in a cluster, but specifically if it's in production, then the same rule set except that only a medium and large are allowed, right? Relatively simple, relatively straightforward. Now, uh, let me sh see whether all that worked. And I'm going to say get cluster admis admission policies. Uh, there we go. And no, I don't need this. Cool. Um, yeah, so you can see that uh, something was already deployed by Argo CD uh, while I was explaining what's happening, so I can, I can try it out, right? So, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, modify and say YQ, I'm going to modify a few files just to deploy my application. I'm going to say policies type um, is going to be pop, 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 pop. No, uh, what am I doing? Let me see what am I, I don't care about this. Uh, what I do care is that I'm going to uh, have my application uh, where is it? Uh, I forgot where did I put it. CNCF demo YTT. There we go. This one, this is my application, right? Uh, it's already defined by YTT because we chose it in previous, uh, previous session. Uh, and I'm going to add that. I'm going to push my application to Git. And we're going to see whether it will work. And we're going to see that in two ways. kubectl uh, port forward. This is my Argo CD. If I go back to uh, localhost 8080, I should see uh, Argo CD should try to deploy my application right away. Come on, why? There we go. Uh, we're talking about security, so password is admin123. There we go. Um, I should have, there is my application, and now if we refresh it, just speed it up, you can see that Argo CD is trying to deploy my application. Uh, in a cluster, right? Now, if I go back to my terminal and say kubectl namespace production, uh, show me deployments, uh, there is no deployment, right? Uh, the policy prevented deployment from being created because it doesn't match the, the rules that were set. Uh, so we're going to change that uh, in a second. Uh, but before we do that, uh, let me show you this. Uh, Production describe uh, admission poli policy. What? Typo. See. There we go. Thank you. Admission <laughs> policy. <laughs> um, that did it. Uh, deployment. Okay. <laughs> there we go. It's, Come it on. It says admission. Uh, I, I cannot type. <laughs> ah, there we go. There we go. Admission policy, uh, what's the policy? Deployment, production, and uh, we should see that uh, that's, that's the policy that is right now running and preventing the, um, preventing deployment from happening. Now, uh, one unfortunate thing about Cube Warden, any maintainers from Cube Warden here? Nobody? Good, you should be ashamed. You should put events over there. Uh, otherwise, nobody knows what's going on. Uh, so, uh, let's, let's fix the problem. Uh, we're going to fix the problem by editing the application itself. Again, uh, YTT uh, values, there we go, values prod. And I'm going to, um, what am I going to do? Let me see, no, oh, I went too far. There we go. 
Uh, I'm going to change replicas. Where is replicas here? No replicas. Okay, I'm going to enter a new entry and say replicas uh, three. And uh, now if I deploy my application, it should work. And I'm going to do that. Anybody here familiar with YTT? No? Uh, cool. I generated my YAML for the application. And if you look at the deployment somewhere, it's somewhere, I promise. You can see that I changed now replicas tree to match the policy. And uh, if I do add commit push, now it should work. And we can confirm that very quickly by saying, Argo City, stop doing whatever you're doing. Stop trying. It's not going to work. And uh, now it should work. You can see here, see how deployment is working. Now the policy allowed it to pass. And we can confirm that. There we go. Now it works. Woo! OK. Go for it. We did it, everyone. OK, next, let's talk about runtime policy. We're going to compare two tools here. We have Falco and we have Cube Armor. So before we talk about the tools, let's talk about why we need runtime policy. Well, do you trust everything that's running in your cluster? Do you trust all your internal applications? Do you trust all your third-party tools? Do you trust all the dependencies? Do you trust all the tens of hundreds of thousands of million bajillion processes that are running? Do you trust every single one? How do you know if a single process is going awry? So that's where, where runtime security comes in. So with runtime security, we're monitoring the system at the kernel level. We're looking at everything that happens through the kernel. And so we can do this to identify unknown unknowns at runtime. And we're also monitoring in, independent of applications. Um, and so when we're monitoring our kernel, what we need to do is first define expected behavior. And then once we know it's expected, then we can make policy to do something when something unexpected in our system happens. So what that something is depends on the tool. So I'm going to jump right into those. First up is Falco. Falco is a graduated project. Falco is a cloud-native threat detector. Falco takes in um, uh, events from lots of sources. Falco has a kernel module. Falco has an eBPF probe. But Falco also has a, lots of plugins that basically look at logs. So there's a Kubernetes plugin. There's cloud provider plugins. I believe there are like 13 plugins. So with all of that source material, you can make Falco rules. So a Falco rule is a set of conditions that when met, trigger an alert. Now an alert in Falco is simply a text message with some sort of priority associated with it. And so Falco has a couple of sub projects that help you manage these alerts. One is called Falco Sidekick. Falco Sidekick can forward these alerts to 50 or 60 different compatible destinations, like phone numbers or Slack or Telegram. Um, and then there's also Falco Talon. Falco Talon will help you take action on alerts. So when something bad happens, then you might kill a container. Or when something bad happens, you might start collecting more information. And that's Falco. Next, we have Cube Armor. Cube Armor, Falco is a graduated project. It's been around a long time. Cube Armor is a sandbox project. And with Cube Armor, you can do the monitoring like you can with Falco, except with Cube Armor, you just do monitoring with eBPF. You can also do alerting, just like you do with Falco. But Cube Armor does something else. So with Cube Armor, when attack is attempted, it fails. So with Falco, an attack is attempted, it happens, and then it triggers something else. With Cube Armor, the attack never happens. It fails before it happens. So this happens, um, Cube Armor uses LSMs, or Linux security modules, is the mechanism that plus eBPF that makes this work. And LSMs are basically access control to the Linux kernel. And that's Cube Armor. So what do you choose between Falco and Cube Armor? Okay, Cube Armor. Wait, only 20 ah. votes have come in. Okay. Bishop, no time. We <laughs> be faster. Touche, touche. We, we're yeah, running out of time. Be, 
Okay, okay. Cube Armor is the definite winner. Yeah, yeah, Falco is trying, but too late. <laughs> yeah, I, I see. I see what's going okay. on. Okay. Uh, so Cube Armor, right? So uh, I'm going to go and uh, in namespace production, I'm going to execute uh, a command uh, in the CNCF. Let's see uh, in this container. And I'm going to say, hey, can you list all the files in the root directory, right? That obviously shouldn't be allowed. Um, so, and it works, right? So I can, I can enter the container, do stuff that I'm not allowed to do, uh, whatever that something is, because there is nothing preventing me from doing that, right? So, what I'm going to do is uh, say kubectl um, annotate, uh, annotate, yeah, correct. Uh, namespace uh, production, and I'm going to add the label cube armor. It's important, uh, Whitney, if I make a typo, you, it's your fault. Posture. I'll be your secretary, I got it. Uh, a block, right? So I'm going basically to say, hey, watch stuff in that namespace, the pods, and block if they don't fit the rule, and overwrite just in case this is not the first time I'm doing that, right? Now, I'm going to do the same thing as before. I'm going to take a set of uh, policies, in this case, cube armor, and I'm going to copy to the directory that Argo CD is watching and synchronizing into the cluster, and I'm going to call it runtime uh, policies.yaml, uh, and I'm going to add, and I'm going to push, cool, and while Argo CD is deploying my policies, uh, I'm going to show you what happened, and that's infra, uh, what, which one, runtime policies, right? So this is what I'm, uh, I'm telling uh, Cube Armor. I'm saying, hey, you know what? Um, any root directory, and it's recursive, meaning any subdirectory or subfile inside of the root, basically everything in that container is not allowed. None of those things are allowed, except if the process is called manage, slash manager. So, in other words, only slash manager will be executable inside of those containers. Anything else is not allowed, right? Relatively easy, relatively straightforward. Now let me see whether it was uh, created. Namespace production, get a cube are more uh, policies, right? So there we go. Uh, the policy was applied by Argo CD while I was showing you what happened. And I'm going to do now a very simple thing. I'm going to try to execute the same command as before, and it doesn't Ooh. work, right? I'm not allowed to execute ls in this case, but any other process but slash manager. There we go. Awesome. And uh, presentation, seven minutes, Whitney. Seven minutes, secrets management, let's hurry up. Okay, we have external secrets operator, secret store CSI driver, and SOPS. So uh, our application has a lot of secrets to worry about. And most of that is handled with a technology called a vault. So a vault, at the bare minimum, it stores secrets safely and it has an API to interact with it. It probably is also going to do some sort of secrets re some, uh, if remediation when secrets leak and secrets rotation. Um, but we're not talking about vaults. There aren't, a, we've scoped our, our Choose Your Own Adventure project to be only CNCF just because we have to draw a line somewhere. There aren't any vaults in the CNCF, so we're not talking about vaults. The problem we're trying to solve now is how do we get our secret, our confidential information from outside of the cluster to inside of the cluster? And that's where our three tools come in. But they all do this differently, so I'm gonna jump right into the tools. The first one, external secrets operator, is a Kubernetes operator. And what it does is it connects to the vault, it retrieves the confidential information, and it stores the confidential information as a Kubernetes secret. It also manages the life cycle of that Kubernetes secret. So our application can access it, and ba 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 ba, we have our secrets. External secrets operator does another couple awesome things. For one, it can generate Kubernetes secrets for you. Also, it can push. It has a resource called a push secret where it can take Kubernetes secrets and it can push them into a vault, which is helpful for replicating secrets across clusters. Next up, we have Secret Store CSI Driver. Secret Store CSI Driver, they said, you know what, Kubernetes secrets aren't very secret. They're just base64 encoded and stored in etcd. We can do better. Let's come up with a secret solution that doesn't use Kubernetes secrets at all. 
So a secret storage CSI driver, it uses CSI, which stands for Container Storage Interface. And so it mounts a temporary file system volume to the application, and then it connects to the vault, retrieves the secret, and it writes the secret into that volume. And so now our application can access the secret, but instead of accessing it as a Kubernetes secret, it's, it's accessing it as part of its file system. And ba 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 ba, we got a secret. And that secret store CSI driver and how it uh, gets around using Kubernetes secrets. Finally, we have SOPS. SOPS stands for Secrets Operations, but if you call it that, no one will know what you're talking about. And with SOPS, it's just a CLI that helps you encrypt and decrypt files. So you can you have your Kubernetes manifest that has a secret in it, you use SOPS to uh, encrypt it, and then you need a decryption key. So only whoever has your decryption key can read this file. So now if you look in our vault, instead of it having the confidential information, it now has our decryption key. So in our particular workflow, because that secret's encrypted, it can now be safely checked in to get. And Argo CD would see it, pick up the change, and then Argo CD sees it's an encrypted file. Now Argo CD would need to be taught how to manage this file with a configuration management plugin. And so once you do that, then Argo CD knows to get the decryption key and decrypt the secret and apply it to Cube API. And ba 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 ba. Now we have our secret. But this is um, a lot of extra complexity, and, and to be fair to SOPS, SOPS is not designed for this use case. SOPS is designed to be a lightweight solution for maybe a, a, a smaller company that isn't using Vault technology yet, and just an easy, lightweight way, way for teams to be able to share secrets and check them into Git. And those are our choices. Please vote. Oh, uh, secret store uh, CSI driver took the lead. Okay. All right. Okay, so I'm not going to do CS uh, uh, secrets. <laughs> I, I can first of all, it cannot be pronounced. I don't know how you pronounce that one. S S C S I. -D. That's why I never try to say Anyways, the letters. Yeah. Uh, the pro excellent project, amazing project. It solves the problem of not using Kubernetes secrets by using volumes. The problem is that. You cannot avoid Kubernetes secrets because of all the third-party applications. Like I'm using Crossplane heavily, it creates Kubernetes secrets. It's unavoidable. I cannot use it. Um, so uh, great project. Cannot be. It can be used in very limited um, a number of cases. And so I'm going to ignore your choices, as uh, <laughs> as, a, as a person who does that. Um, and I'm going to... And, and you should encrypt your secrets at rest while they're in etcd. And yes, I mean, which all managed Kubernetes secrets are encrypted at rest anyways. Yeah. Uh, anyways, so uh, what I do have here is uh, I'm going to show you the file, actually, that, uh, we, are, that, that we are deploying right now, uh, or the application that we are using right now. And you will see if I ever find it. There we go. Right now, my application uses secret stored in Git. Anybody can see it. Anybody can do it. Horrible. Don't be confused that you see random characters that just base 64 encoded. Everybody can decode it. So I'm going to change that and uh, make it use external secrets instead. And I'm going to do that by uh, by 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 uh, adding another parameter somewhere here. Insecure. Uh, there we go. False. Uh, I think that that's the yeah false, right? This is uh, not really important, but uh, that's how I structured my YTT that uh, generates um, generates what I need. And now if I if I generate YAML again uh, for my application. You will see here the secret is gone, trust me. And instead, I'm going to add something called the uh, external secret to the cluster. It's going to reference, uh, it's going to get something from, in this case, from AWS, the secret called production Postgres, uh, or the key is called production progress, and it will create this secret in my cluster, right? This is the name of the target secret that I want to create. So uh, I'm going to, what am I going to do? I'm going to copy that. Uh, Argo CD, 
pa, 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 think that this is the file. Yes, I'm going to edit. I'm going to push it. Um, I'm going to go back to eight seconds. I cannot do it. Uh, my application, stop doing whatever you're doing. Argo CD, bug off. Uh, refresh again. Uh, be fast, Victor. Uh, there we go. Kubectl namespace production get external secrets. It should be there. The external Ooh. secret was created. And if I uh, go the get secrets, the secret is there, and if I show you the secret, uh, get secret, pa 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 pa, dead, oh, uh, YAML, if I output it as YAML, you will see that it generated a secret. Where is it? Come on, this is my password. This is now from AWS uh, secret, uh, and if I output it, uh, base 64 decode, uh, you will never find out. <laughs> that's, how, that's, how, that's how safe I am. Um, that's it. Nice. We are out Amazing. of time. Will you put the last slide up, please? The last slide. OK. Yes. Uh, this is the light. Uh, yes. There just, we go. Slideshow. Uh, oh, that's what we would have done if we had more time. Will you, will you get? Sorry. We got uh, into the secret uh, slides. Oh, it's going to be forever. Uh, tell this me is all the stuff you're not learning about. OK. Aha. Uh, this is the last slide. It has a couple of QR codes. Our heroes in production safely. Woo. We have a couple of QR codes. One is to the You Choose show, and we have You Choose stickers up here on the stage and on our person, so please come say hi and get a sticker. The other one's to a Git repo where you can choose your own adventure yourself. Have fun with that. And there, we're cut off. All right, have a great day. Thank you so much, everyone.